everybody hi patrons and welcome to the flute practice we are officially supposed to be in our week six of our practice challenge journey i've been doing this practice challenge with my patrons and this is supposed to be the sixth week but i am kind of pulling the brakes and i am putting kind of like a moment of stop pause or wait hang on a second here and i would like us to just spend some time taking a look at a really really important issue it's something that I have really dealt with in the past week and I think that some of you have dealt with this I know from some of the comments that I got from last week's video where it was really clear in that video that I was overworked and far too stressed out and it was clear to me that a lot of you are struggling with this too and a lot of you have or will or are busy struggling with the problem of burnout or leading towards burnout so today I am going to address this topic. I think it is so unbelievably important and I hope as we go through this video we're going to see why this is so important. So I am not a psychologist, I am not a medical professional, I am going to be speaking from my personal experience but I am going to bring, I did like a really like <laughs> quick google search on kind of like a more official definition of burnout and what I found made me realize, I think even more so, how serious and how important it is for us to address this issue. So burnout, according to this article in Psychology Today, is a state of chronic stress that leads to physical and emotional exhaustion, cynicism and detachment, feelings of ineffectiveness and lack of accomplishment. Okay, so there's a lot in there. They gave kind of a list of further symptoms, which I'm just going to um, kind of briefly go through. Chronic fatigue. So kind of feelings of feeling tired the whole time, feeling exhausted. I found often, um, you know, especially last week, I just found my, my resistance, my resilience was not there. So I would kind of get through a day, sleep, feel okay in the morning, be like, yeah, okay, I can restart this, I can, I can go again. And by midday feel super exhausted again, even more so than the day before. And that just kind of compounds and eventually you just, you kind of just crash. Insomnia was also a big one for me last week. Uh, not being able to sleep, waking up in the middle of the night or not being able to fall asleep. And of course that just really adds to the tiredness. You're not feeling like you're getting that good rest that you really need when you are stressed out. Forgetfulness and impaired concentration in my video last week. I think you guys had a good look at my impaired concentration. I, I It felt sort of like this veil, like clouded mind. Like I couldn't like, actually focus or see clearly. Uh, physical symptoms, uh, anything from chest pains and heart palpitations to gastrointestinal problems um, and also which kind of goes on to the next point, increased illness, so a very low immune system where your body is just really depleted of its resources, loss of appetite or gaining appetite I think can also happen. Sometimes you know people when they're really stressed out they tend to eat more then it can really perpetuate things like anxiety and depression for those of us who struggle with that it really is a trigger um, heightened levels of stress or heading towards burnout anger that was an interesting one for me uh, anger especially within your interpersonal relationships whether it's in work or in your family or friends or whatever it might be that you just have these kind of outbursts of anger and irritability really really interesting um and you know i mean i guess you i know that but <laughs> you don't think about it then loss of enjoyment pessimism, isolation. I mean, I think as a musician, all of these things, uh, I mean, isolation, I mean, we, we're quite isolated. We spend a lot of time in practice rooms, but loss of enjoyment and pessimism is, is really quite um, frightening, actually, because we're doing something that we supposedly love. And when we're no longer loving it and we're no longer enjoying it, but it's becoming um, something that is causing us anxiety and, and you know, burnout, I think I think we want to really consider and rethink um, what we're doing not in terms of like being a musician but like how we're doing that detachment uh, detachment has to do with kind of no longer you know taking on your normal obligations so maybe you're calling in sick the whole time um, you are missing appointments or that sort of stuff also kind of isolation that go hand in hand Feelings of apathy and hopelessness. And once again, I think when we review how we practice and perform, when we're feeling apathetic or hopeless about our practice, that is scary. Um, that is scary and very serious for us as musicians. And I think this one really hit home for me. Lack of productivity and poor performance. And I think when looking at this and when we, we're assessing the importance 
of understanding the mental aspect of music making, we need to realize that what goes on up here is absolutely deciding for what will happen in the practice room and in the performance. And if this is not right, if we're not in a good space here, we can do number one, incredible damage or, a, you know, best case scenario, we're just not going to actually pr produce any good work. We're just not actually going to be working efficiently and effectively. And unfortunately, this kind of perpetuates the cycle because then we're not getting progress. Then we're feeling even more stressed. We're feeling even more overwhelmed. We're feeling like, you know, that that idea of lack of accomplishment that we spoke about right at the beginning. So we need to take this quite seriously, I think. And I think if you're feeling any of this, if you're feeling overwhelmed, if you're feeling like you're, you know, you're not accomplishing anything, if you're feeling like you just are absolutely physically and emotionally exhausted, that you just actually cannot pick up your instrument and play anymore, we need to take a step back. I'm going to talk about some possible uh, solutions to this in a moment. I think what I first want to just deal with, though, is why. Why and why specifically for us musicians? And this video might very well apply to some of you guys who aren't um, full-time musicians. Maybe you're just doing it as a hobby, but maybe there's another area in your life where you've experienced this or are experiencing this. I think very often why we land up in the situation, and I'm speaking from personal experience here, is unrealistic expectations and pressure. And those things can come from ourselves and they can come from external sources so you know if I'm reviewing the my last experience now guys I just want to like preface this I have experienced some form of mild I wouldn't say severe I, I know people that have had severe burnout and it is very 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 serious I just want to like throw that in there it gets a point where the brain kind of just it like breaks that's how it feels and uh, for some people so we just don't want to get to that point. I just want to you know, start by saying that. I've had, thank goodness, really sensible people around me who have also helped to step in and intervene in the right moments. Um, and I hope that I can be maybe one of those voices that just helps you to step in and intervene in the right moment. But from my latest experience of actually possibly pushing too hard, I think pressure was definitely one of the big things. I was putting so much pressure and expectation on myself as to what I was supposed to accomplish and achieve and manage and do in a very short space of time. I had a huge show on Sunday. You know, were there going to be enough audience members? Were we going to cover costs? Were we going to be able to uh, make any profit? Were we going to be able to pay the musicians? So on and so forth. And then going even further, you know, how, how are people, what are people going to think if there's not a big enough audience? And, and what if I don't look successful? And if, if I don't seem successful? And, you know, what are my family and friends going to think? And all of these pressures that we put on ourselves. And truthfully, I don't really have an answer how not to put those pressure on ourselves. That is a journey that I'm still going down. This is very fresh. But I think we need to be aware of what the culprit is. And I think for musicians in our practice spaces, often this is, I need to have achieved this, or I need to be at this level at this time over there. And we put this either unrealistic goals on ourselves or realistic goals, but we don't allow ourselves that process time. We don't allow ourselves the time to get there. So we decide, okay, I need to be playing, I don't know, Iber Concerto by next year, June. And then we get frustrated because we're not there immediately. And so we put this incredible pressure on ourselves, and we overdo it. We just push too hard. We do too much in too short a space of time. And, you know, the insane thing we think, and we, we live in this culture where it says you've got to work hard and you've got to, you know, you've got to work hard for what you achieve and you've got to work 16 hour days and you've got to never give up and never sleep. And, and all these things, which, you know, we read these books about the successful people and how they wake up at 5 a.m. and they start working and, and don't go to sleep and how they never give up and they work through their weekends. And I don't even know what we work. We, we live in a society that so pushes this idea of hard work getting you success. And yes, guys, nothing in this world substitutes hard work. But, and this is such a huge but, if we are working too hard that we overwork ourselves, all that hard work is kind of pointless because we just crash. And it takes us long, longer and longer to recover. 
Um, so what I mean by this, if you are experiencing burnout and you don't immediately take that step back and, you know, take a rest, take a break, relax, the longer you sustain that space of, of that overstress, anxiety, so on and so forth, the longer it is or the more severe it's going to be and possibly the longer it's going to take you to recover. And that should hopefully open up some ears and eyes when it comes to this. Because as a musician, what do we prize the most? Regular, consistent practice, right? That's what we really want. We want those like every day, just chugging away. But you will get to a point if you push too hard and you overdo it, where you cannot anymore. And when you reach that point where you are no longer physically able to actually pick up your instrument and play anymore, when it is so severe, you are going to need a longer recovery time than if you catch it early and realize, okay, whoa, I'm overdoing it. I'm working too hard. I feel like I'm, some of these symptoms are starting to kick in and actually I need to take a break. So I think I really want us to just hit home of that this happens to a lot of us. It happens to all of us, I think, I believe in, in varying forms. And the important thing is how we manage it, how we deal with it, and not that it happens at all. There's no shame in it. There's no problem with it. It's not like you're a bad musician or you can't play the flute or you're never going to be a musician or any of those things. I promise you guys, I have experienced this so many times in my life where I have pushed too hard and I've had to take that step back. I like to think that this a little bit like a physical illness, you know, or like a physical problem. If you stumble and you hurt yourself, you sprain your ankle and you carry on running and you carry on doing what you're doing, you're going to hurt that ankle more, right? You're going to damage that ankle more. And if you never ever rest and stop doing activity, you know, doing the activity that's hurting it or that's perpetuating the injury, you are just going to need a longer recovery time eventually when you do decide to fully recover. And if you're really bad and you will carry on and carry on and carry on until you physically can't walk on that foot anymore. And by that stage, I think most of us can understand and agree that you've really messed up your, your foot, you know, like you, you might need to really go like see doctors and stuff like that. And I think we need to think the same way about a burnout and anxiety and so on and so forth. I think we need to think about our mental like space as being part of our ability to make music just like our bodies our physical bodies are a part of it just like our disciplines are part of it just like our enjoyment enthusiasm you know all of that the mental aspect a mental state of your mind is so huge when we're feeling good when we're feeling inspired when we're feeling motivated when we're feeling positive our practice is great our practice is good we have you know productive wholesome, exciting, joyful practice. And when it's not that space, when we're pessimistic, when we are uh, tired, when we are not able to concentrate, when we're feeling like there's no accomplishment or no progress, we have the opposite problem. We are going to have very unproductive, very uh, negative practice. I have a friend, she says, what you tell is your spell. And I think this is kind of like true for our brains. What we say in our heads, what we tell ourselves in our heads, is what comes out and so if we're in a space like this we need to deal with the space and we need to take a step back and that's what we're doing today so the first thing i'm really going to recommend if you find yourself in the space if you're finding yourself with some or more of these symptoms and you think okay this like definitely sounds like my space right now that i'm in the first thing i want you to do is i want you wherever you are whatever you're doing to just take a step back and relax rest take it easy do what i'm doing this week yes i had a plan i was like i'm gonna film you know my seven weeks of this practice challenge and then i'm going to grahamstown for the festival there's this huge arts festival where we're going to and then i'll be done just before then so that's great then i can you know take a few weeks off then and I'll, blah, 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 and i'm this you know i had this whole plan worked out of what i was going to do and in that having this hectic week, having this, you know, curveball thrown at you and being like, whoa, I need to take a step back. I really have to just rethink what I'm doing here. Is it worth it? Is it worth me pushing so hard now that by the time I get to this wonderful, incredible, very exciting festival, wonderful opportunity, I'm going to be so burnt out that I cannot enjoy it, that I am, you know, all of these symptoms and more. I was already there with some of them, like way up there. So, Wherever you are, whatever you're doing, find a way to take a step back and really prioritize. Realize that there are certain things 
that are less important. Even if it's an exam, maybe you have a university exam coming up, maybe even it's a big concert. Sometimes, and I've had experiences like this where I have not been able to play. I've been sick or I once had a shoulder injury and I, you know, I haven't been able to practice right up until the day of the concert or exam. And I promise you every single time the rest has been more important than throwing in hours of practice. So wherever you're at, um, I just, I, I cannot stress this enough. If your body is not cooperating with you, it doesn't matter what you what you have to do, where you're going to be at. Your body is just not going to get you there unless you take that step back and rest and relax and take it easy. Now, this whole like big, huge relax, what does that even mean, right? Like, how do you relax? I, I love this. Like, people are like, yeah, you must just relax more. Like, don't, don't be so stressed. Just like relax. Wonderful. Thank you. That's great advice. That's helpful. So helpful. Yeah. It's, you know, not like I don't want to relax. So I struggle with this a lot. I'm sure many of you do. And, and I think as a musician, one of the biggest problems is guilt. We feel such intense guilt. It's one of the like craziest double edged swords. On the one hand, we, we, we like think we have to practice these like, you know, six hours a day that I, I at university. I was like, I'm going to practice six hours every single day. I'm going to get really good at the flute. Um, and then I'd like do that for a while and then I'd completely crash and burn. And then I'm just like, okay, okay, take a step back, take a step back. And then I'll just get it six hours a day. So that's the one hand, right? We just, we practice a lot. We push too hard. We, and then the craziness of it is even if we take a step back from that and we were like, okay, I'm not going to push so hard. I'm not going to practice six hours a day. I'm just going to take it easy. We then take all that like crazy pressure work and we transform that into like a whole dose of guilt and we start like pushing that onto our practice so or, or just onto our rest or relaxation so instead of just relaxing and enjoying we suddenly feel guilty we just throw all this guilt onto what we're doing and that is so we have pressure for me as the one big culprit as to why we experience burnout and guilt is the other huge culprit we have to learn to deal with and come to terms with this guilt feeling of I need to, I should be, I, uh, you know, I have to be. You don't have to, should, nothing. And this is so much easier said than done. I cannot say that I have won the battle against guilt myself. I, I cannot tell you that. It's an ongoing process, an ongoing battle, having to constantly talk to myself and just remind myself that it is okay to take a break. It is okay to rest. It is part of the process. It's part of the learning process. But... There are some helpful things that you can do um, that really help for relaxation. Doing, getting out, going for walks, uh, getting out, doing outside or outdoor sports or just any sports. I love surfing. I know I mentioned this. So this morning I went for like a nice two hour surf. Wonderful. You can also start like rituals are really great. So just getting into sort of daily rituals of, of taking moments of calmness, of silence, um, whatever it is you might do, whether you, I know some of you say you meditate, you'd love to do meditation. Um, perhaps some of you, that's more kind of prayer time for some of you. Maybe that is just a moment of sitting quietly in the garden, uh, you know, or sitting quietly in a space in your house. Perhaps some of you is just mindfully getting out of bed in the morning where we're not just waking up and going straight into our phones and into our laptops and into our crazy life and communication and all of that. Um, and this is another little tip that uh, I saw about dealing with this, and that is disconnecting. So really switching off, switching off phones, laptops, not making ourselves so accessible and like, you know, communicable, communicable. I don't know if that's a word. Like people can't just contact us the whole time, basically. Um, and especially during practice, guys, like I, when we are practicing, I think this is such an important time for us to just switch all of that off, really kind of treat the practice space as a safe, special space. For some of us, this might also just be a question of not necessarily stopping to practice, but just maybe practicing something else to actually moving to something that brings us joy again, whether it's doing improvisation or playing your favorite songs or, you know, whatever it might be that we're just stepping away from maybe the hectic practice regime that we're in and we're just stepping to something more fun and joyful and um yeah something that's not so stressful there is a time where you're going to possibly need to consider professional help 
And I think um, my kind of warning signs for this are, of course, if the anxiety or depression are getting to really bad states where you are no longer functioning properly. Um, I'd say if you're having really severe anger outbursts or kind of personality changes where you are becoming once again dysfunctional. And I think that's an important one is the dysfunction where you're no longer able to function properly. That is when I think the real warning red flags need to go up. And especially if it's persistent. So especially if this has been going on for quite a long time um, and it hasn't gotten better and there's no end in sight. I think it's really, really time. Uh, it's really useful to say there are medications that can help. There are uh, therapies that can help. A lot of really, really, really great, important therapies that can help. And sometimes it's really just a case of sitting down with somebody and talking through all your stresses and anxieties and just kind of like unloading and getting a bit of perspective. Uh, this can be really helpful. I think especially as a musician, it can be so helpful to talk through all these crazy pressures that we put on ourselves, all these expectations that we put on ourselves. And dealing with feelings of incompetency, of inadequacy, of uh, and self-confidence, self-esteem, all of those things. Really, 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 really huge and important to deal with. You know, I always say musicians, we have this really possibility. It's an incredible possibility because we really come close, like one-on-one -on -one with all of our real biggest problems in life. Because it just, it's like the music is just this like mirror to all the stuff that sits in there be it insecurities or uh, you know feelings of inadequacy whatever it might be it really it's like you cannot escape them in in performance and music making but it's an opportunity because we get to really deal with the stuff okay guys I could talk about this topic for such a long time and I don't always really fully know where to kind of draw the line or where to stop I think what I want to just say is um, please if you are if you have any questions, you have any comments, please do comment below. You can also send me personal messages. I've got a link to my website. There's a platform there. You can contact me. I try my best to get back to you um, in, you know, the best time that I can. Uh, as I said, I also have to just always kind of like make sure that this is staying level and, and, and balanced. But I will push some side, push aside some other things to really make time for you guys. So please send me uh, questions or maybe you just want to tell me your story sometimes i found just speaking into this camera just telling you guys a little bit about my experience is already just like a huge weight off so maybe it is just writing me an email and telling me about your story you can do that uh all your data everything you ever send me guys is always very very much private uh like all of that um so this is a safe space for that I think it's really encouraging to know that so many of us go through this, so many musicians I've spoken to, friends, family members, the works, we go through this. And I think we can really support and encourage each other through this and help each other through this and realize that it is okay and there is a way out. Okay, everybody, until next time, happy practicing, really genuinely happy practicing and see you then.